We are now moving to uh, Professor oh. Hong Jie-shun. Uh, he is Norman and Cecilia Yi Professor in Bioinorganic Chemistry, as well as the Chair of Chemistry uh, in this university. His research work focuses on chemical biology of metals, particularly metals in biology and medicine. He is a pioneer to introduce um, metallo metallomics, metalloproteomics uh, to bioinorganic chemistry to uncover potential metallo metallodrug binding proteins in pathogens. So over to you, uh, Professor Shin. Okay, uh, Chair, thank you for your introduction. And I will uh, give a uh, brief and talk on the chemical biology approach for drug discovery for this um, SARS coronavirus 2. So what can chemists do uh, is the subtitle. And I'm Hong Jasun from the Department of Chemistry. So I'm also the Norman Cecilia Ip Professor in Bioinorganic Chemistry. And so that's the slides and some of the colleagues that showed already and how series of this um, infection and it's already over uh, 3 million people being affected and over 200,000 people died because of the uh, virus infection. And so clearly uh, we need to find the approaches to really treat the disease. disease. And of course, then if I if you uh, if I ask the question, can we develop the vaccine for immediate use, or can we develop the new medicine for the virus infection now? And so clearly, the answer is no. And even we test a variety of viruses, uh, the vaccines, and we use a variety of compounds to test them. And the earliest uh, for the use of um, vaccines probably by the end of the year or next year. And also, it takes an eight to 10 years for development of a new drug. And because any compounds need to pass through this and phase one to phase two clinical trials. So repurposing the currently used drug is probably the best and also the practical approach. And I'm sure you heard about and certain news on this um, remitzivir and also the hydroxychloroquine and both compounds has tested in clinical trials and negative and, and news and we, we heard them from the medium already. And so the development of a new uh, drug definitely uh, takes a much longer time for us to uh, develop a new medicine. So this is the uh, structure of this um, coronavirus. And I'd like to share with you because I'm a chemist and we would like to zoom in and, and to see uh, what are those important proteins. And so this is the typical virus and use this color. And if you zoom in a little bit, you see the different dots and with different color to represent uh, different proteins. And so in the right, I showed you this um, spike protein on the surface of the virus. And then we have this um, um, RNA and, and also the nuclear capsid. This is wrapped as the RNA. And we also have the membrane. We also have the envelope. And so this um, single-stranded RNA inside the virus. And overall, the size of uh, a typical virus is about 50 to 200 nanometer. You can think about or regard it as a nanoparticle. And during the infection, this um, spike protein needs to interact with the ACE2, and which is the a receptor on the a human, on the surface of the human health. And so if I give you a little bit of background, this ACE2 is well known for this um, converting enzyme 2. It's a carboxylipeptase to convert this um, angiotensin E1 to this um, angiotensin 1 to 9. It's a peptide uh, of unknown function and to facilitate the uh, maturation of this um, anotensin, so the peptide hormone that can control this um, uh, constriction, also the blood pressure. So scientists then use this uh, compound as a drug target for development of, uh, for other purposes uh, already. And of course, I would like to uh, show you the 
a more structural side as a chemist. And so this is the structural genomics of this uh, coronavirus, uh, including coronavirus and uh, SARS coronavirus, and as well as the uh, SARS coronavirus 2. And if you see the whole genome, and so it consists of certain important proteins I mentioned already, for example, this uh, protease, this envelope protein, and and spike protein, which this is the monomer to demonstrate. And then this is the uh, recently published work on the detailed uh, interactions between the ACE2 with the spike protein, which provide insight on the potential development of the vaccine or the drug. And in addition, the virus synthesizes a series of, the, series of these, we call the non-structured protein. And these proteins won't be expressed inside the virus, but instead during the infection, and these proteins will be expressed in the host cell. So in this case then, and these proteins are again played a very important role on this um, uh, during the infection process, and certain of the important protein structures, again, was soft, for example, this polymerase was in soft very recently. And so this um, 3 tl protease, again, this is the uh, dimeric structure to demonstrate. And, and this is the another NSP3 protein. And the structure was also uh, determined. And in addition, the variety of other small uh, non-structured proteins was structures also determined. And really provide an important information at atomic level for the discovery or uh, identification of potential is a target as well as they develop the new inhibitors for uh, drug development. And of course then and in chemistry department and we are scientists we can create a new molecules as new materials or as drug candidates. So we can categorize and also track those molecules in vivo. And so we Use of magic hand, we can synthesize a variety of compounds which you propose the structure. Maybe my colleague in the department can synthesize. And then those molecules, for example, can turn on the light up the protein things themselves. We can track the protein modification in the important and biological stages and during the cancer development. Or my colleague also, we can synthesize a variety of compounds, new materials, either as an OLED or as the other. Uh, materials. And so, and of course, in this case, now how can we really develop a new medicine? So if we come back to look at this um, overall structure of this um, spike protein, because I showed you, spike protein is the protein intact with the human ACE2. And the protein uses the human ACE2, the intracellular protein we call the TMPRSS2, for entry into the target cell. So antibodies against this um, virus and spike protein may offer some protection against this um, virus infection. And therefore, this um, spike protein is an ideal target for vaccine. So indeed, in certain vaccine development, as Professor Yan, Yuan mentioned, and to use this um, spike protein as a target for drug development. And of course, if you look at another important protein, will be the RNA developed dependent polymerase. So this is again a very good target because an RNA dependent polymerase and binds the var RNA during the replication and also during the infection. So this is the a major a drug target, and with the structure and if that reported very recently to show even the a a hot compound re, redisivir, remedisivir, uh, intact and binding to the protein at the specific site to demonstrate. And you can see this is the DNA RNA site. And moreover, in the active site, these two manganese play the role uh, for the function of the protein. And scientists even use this protein protein interaction map to see those and virus proteins and the human proteins and how do they impact each other and to review and discover new potential drug targets and also potentially uh, drug repurposing. 
and they identified over 67 trapper human proteins or the host factors targeted by maybe 69 existing FDA-approved drugs. And these drugs can be used in clinically already or maybe in clinical compounds. So using this affinity purification together with this mass spectrometry, we can identify the variety of um, potential targets and, and also those and clinically use the uh, uh, drugs as a, uh, for uh, further development or further screening. And scientists even think about how to develop this vaccine. And of course, they are ongoing. And even that, you will see all of the vaccines are in visa phase one, phase two clinical trials, including this, for example, and casino bio from China. They uh, studied this in phase two clinical trials, and, and they believed that it will be uh, very effective and can be used in and very soon uh, in humans. But again, we, we doubt it. It takes maybe months, even a year for drug development uh, or for the use of vaccine uh, in clinic. And so clearly, uh, we need to use these um, uh, new approaches to uh, find a shortcut and simple way to repurposing the drug. And so in this case, then of course, then what can chemists can do to fight against this um, virus infection so we need to screening those clinically used drugs for immediate use. So that's the, uh, the best way and also the practical way. Although we can discover and identify uh, the inhibitors against the virus uh, in future. And so clearly we need to use this uh, simple approach. So I would like to uh, come back uh, to this uh, non-structured proteins of this uh, coronavirus. And you can see uh, in this coronal virus, it consists of 14 non-structured proteins. And among these 14 non-structured proteins, and some of them and serve as a chaperone, for example, and six and seven and eight work and together with NSP12. Uh, and this an um, uh, exonucleus and will form a complex with NSP10 again they form this uh, complex to work together. And so if we analyze this uh, structure in SP12, 13 and 14, and these three, and I can see uh, they have the common feature. If you see, this is the polymerase, which is very important. In the active side, this is the manganese and cleavage the, uh, to, to play the role. And, and again, uh, in the uh, finger domain and also the another uh, interface domain, there are two things, and in this case, then play the role to maintain the structure and as well as the function of the enzyme. So another important enzyme will be the helix. If you see the helix, uh, it's typically unwind the double helical DNA. In other words, make this a duplex DNA, change the single strand. And this an enzyme, again, achieves its function mainly through this an zinc finger. Domain and this thing finger domain again play a crucial role. And if we look at another enzymes, and uh, this is NSP14, and so this is the structure and it shows the complexation of this 14 with 10. So you they have this and again three zinc fingers. And moreover, the magnesium, and again in this domain to play the role to uh, cleavage the uh, nucleus. So, and this is the common feature. If you see, and these are three proteins in this non structured proteins, and, and clearly they play the role. In fact, uh, if you look at those human genomes, and around the half of the enzymes are metalloenzymes. In other words, they use the zinc, manganese, magnesium, or copper as the cofactors to achieve their functions. And zinc is probably very unique, if not the only one. And zinc is the only or the field of the metals can adopt this um, typical symmetric geometry we call the tetrahedral. So that's why biologists um, think in biology. And we just wonder the way we can find a simple approach to target these groups of proteins instead of only one and to test uh, whether we can find a new compounds. And to work with uh, microbiology colleagues as microbiology and uh, Xiaofeng Yuan and, and and we work together, in fact, since the uh, Chinese New Year. So we would like to screen 
and the variety of different compounds uh, from a drug bank as we want to uh, quickly find certain compounds can be used directly in humans as is a case study or just go directly to the patients. And surprisingly, we found out of these seven compounds and most of them uh, can kill the virus uh, in those affected cells. So this is the data to demonstrate the viral copies in the supernatant of these um, affected cells. So what we observed in the, the dramatic decrease of the virus copies once we treat increasing amount of this, this um, and compound. And similarly, and so with the uh, intracellular viral use again, we observed that if this is the control, you can see this is the uh, copy of the viruses and decreased dramatically and when we increase the concentration. And we also test uh, using this um, um, fluorescence. So this is the uh, mock effect cells and we stand with the blue. And you can see even this is a three dimensional. And then, so the effect is the virus, the effect is the cell with the virus. So in this case, then we use this as a control DMSO, it's a solvent. So the green is stained, those are cells are stained by green, are those are cells affected by the virus. Okay. So we can see them from the mock effect to here. And then once we treat these um, compounds, and so we use this, we call it Hong Kong U C2. So C means some compound. So the second compound we give it. And so after we treat this um, new compound, so in this case, you can see a uh, cells and stained with the green and almost completely disappeared. To demonstrate indeed, this is a very effective compound to kill the virus. And of course, you may wonder, and quite often you will see it works in cells, what about in animals? And so, and again, at microbiology and Shofeng Yuan and, uh, and also Professor uh, Yuan Goying uh, in microbiology set up this um, an hamster uh, infection model. So in this case, then we just um, treat this um, compound again in the affected uh, hamsters. We use the control and also uh, we use them, the remdesivir as a comparison and for, for comparison to see how effective of this um, and our compound. And this diagram shows then the different tissues, for example, this um, nasal uh, uh, turbinate and also the lung. In particular, you will see in the lung tissue and after treatment of these um, uh, new compounds and compare with the control, the virus being um, decreased by about a two lock unit. And importantly, even better than this um, the med severe. So this is a very encouraging data to show us and we can easily identify the variety of compounds and to kill the viruses. Of course, then we use the, an, an unusual way. We test in cells, the virus affected cells first and then go to the animal. In fact, in drug discovery, we will always um, assume or identify the target and then use this target to screening uh, using this high throughput screening. So we come back we overexpressed in this um, um, uh, virus and the helicase and of the viruses, as I showed you previously, and the structure uh, of these analogs determined and published the last year. So in this case, then we overexpressed and purified the enzyme. We screened a variety of compounds, which I showed you is this is a flow chart. And then we can screen because the virus is the helicase, the unwinding of DNA, which just simply measure its ability to unwind the DNA. So this curve to demonstrate in certain compounds, I use this in, in, in compound two, so HKUC2, and as an example, and showcase to show, for example, the unwinding gradually, you can see the increase the concentration and the enzyme loss its ability to unwind the DNA anymore, because the enzyme is also the ATP rays we similarly screen its ability to inhibit this ATP race activity. So again, and at micromolar, even sub-micromolar concentration. And moreover, we would like to see whether this um, incubation is due to the binding of the compound with the enzyme. So in this case, to inhibit the activity, and we again uh, set up the screening method to screen this um, binding of this um, 
new compounds to the enzyme. So this is a curve to show, and uh, indeed this is a binding, and we also measure the relative binding affinity is about micromolar concentration to confirm indeed uh, we found not only works in cells, and we also set up this high screening method to screen the variety of compounds for your information. We actually built up a, a compound bank to screen all of those, and we can find, and of course, the better or more effective compounds. So because of the uh, IP reason, I won't disclose the detailed structure and information of those compounds. But if you have any new compounds you think can be interested, you're welcome to contact us and to discuss them, and we can probably help you to screen this and those compounds, okay? And so and to summary, and currently, and as colleagues and, and we talked about already, so no and approved the treatment for the virus infection. And there are, of course, some pros and cons for different strategies. So repurposing is a practical approach uh, for combating this um, uh, coronavirus infection. And importantly, uh, in cooperation microbiology, we discovered certain candidates which are even better than the remdesivir, and we are working uh, on the maybe broad spectrum inhibited in future. Of course, then, and we need the funding to uh, continue the work. And, and with the university, other funding organization will be most welcome to, uh, to discuss uh, and with us. And also, I showed you for the drug development, and so we need to work together. And among these uh, chemists and biologists and pharmacologists and clinicians and so on. So Hong Kong U has the unique, uh, uh, un uh, we are the very unique and with um, and different expertise and within the university, I'm sure. And uh, through this joint effort, we can uh, achieve find this drug development. So finally, I shall thank the colleagues uh, working in the group and the subgroup of this antimicrobial my group and uh, my collaborators and from the microbiology as well as the dentistry and, and of course the funding, I should particularly thank the Norman and Cecilia Eve for their setting up the endowed chair. And finally, thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Professor Xun. Um, so there are two questions uh, from the audience. One is from Jasper Chan. Uh, so recently, there are facial masks from different brands that claim to contain metals like silver, copper, uh, and they, the claim is that they prohibit uh, virus growth or even kill them. So are they good enough? The antimicrobial and property of silver is well known. And indeed, and I noticed that there are certain facial masks and they use this and silver or nano silver or even copper and for uh, these um, purposes. And, and I'm sure it will work on some extent, but then, and unfortunately, uh, silver, uh, we cannot use silver for internal purposes. And also a related one from myself is, is that uh, what is actually the mechanism uh, for how the metals, how the different metals work? Like, uh, uh, you know, we know that um, the virus can survive either longer or, or shorter on metallic surfaces, and that depends on on, on the type of metallic surfaces. So, so how what do we know about the mechanisms? And uh, that's a very and uh, good question. Uh, in fact, in different metals have different features, different oxidation states, and some metals can readily be oxidized or reduced. In other words, then on certain surface, uh, metal surfaces, they can be oxidized and maybe and then generate the, the, the free radical. So in this case, can, can kill the viruses or bacteria, but certain metals won't readily be oxidized, like titanium and silver, for example, in particular silver, or even copper can readily be oxidized, and even if you put leaf in the air. So in this case, then and certain copper surface or even silver surface may have certain antiviral activity. And of course, not certain people reported them previously. And but for again for internal application, it takes longer time. At least at the moment, we don't see any uh, latest progress. All right. Uh, this is another one from Cheng Cheng uh, Chao. Uh, the question is: Is there anything we could get from working on the vaccine of COVID nineteen 
Um, sorry, I lost the question. Um, oh, he changed the question. So the new question from him is, is it possible that the virus has already been upgraded before we could develop the effective vaccine or drug? <clears throat> okay, so that's, that's a very good question. And again, then raised by others as well. And at the moment, uh, we always try to use the single target to develop either the vaccine or the drug. And, and of course, then there are pros and cons, and normally the single target is more very effective. But again, for virus, the mutation frequency is very high. So in this case, if you target a single target, for example, the single protein, and again, and somehow after a period of time, it doesn't work anymore. So that's why I didn't mention them in my talk, and, in fact, we would like to target a group of proteins of the virus. So in this case, then they have a less chance or much slower chance to develop this vaccine. And I hope we can eventually to develop this we call the broad spectrum inhibitors, which we are working at the moment. But again, as I mentioned, then we do find external support to continue the work. So thank you for the question. Okay, this is from Yi Wu He, uh, he's our Chief Innovation Officer. The question is, do you think the cocktail therapy could be more effective? Have you tested any combination? And that's a very good question. Cocktail therapy for antiviral treatment has been well known. And as even Professor Yan, Yuan mentioned, and he used three medicines and to treat the virus infection. And so as a chemist, and I, one way that I agreed, and on the other side, the chemists sometimes like to conjugate maybe more than one drug together as a new molecule, as a new component, then we can use it for treatment in the future to have this in synergy. But again, and it takes a little bit of time. And, but that's a very good question. Yes, it's possible. All right, the last question from uh, Pan Gao. Uh, is the HKUC2 a currently available drug? What is the original target? Well, that's a very, a very important question. And in short, yes, and we continue, we eventually did the animal study because the compound two, HKUC2, is then clinically approved drug for the treatment for other purposes. And uh, it's uh, multiple targets. And uh, we, we, we had extensive experience on this compound. And that's why in case, uh, really, the community needs, and, and I'm sure we will work with microbiology, we can disclose more information to save the society. So, excellent question. Thank you again.